everyone and welcome to a Spring Boot part 4 video on IntelliPart. In this video, we are going to create the business service layer and return the required JSON objects as we did in the previous video. Now before we discuss more about it, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So let's start with building a REST API for our course. So REST API deals with the entities or the nouns such as, you know, topics, courses and lessons. So when you are building a REST API, you need to identify the resources of your APIs, what it will be. So if I talk about resources, resources basically are the things in your domains, such as in our case for the course API, it can be topics, courses or lessons. So when a consumer is trying to interact with your resource, so he will be thinking of how to access these things such as topics. So how you can get to a particular topic. So there are certain parameters to it and we are going to discuss it one by one. So for now, the first step we have done it successfully is that we have identified our resources for the course API that is topics. So there are certain HTTP words associated with it, such as you can get the topics, you know, you can, you know, update the topic, you can delete the topic, or you can create a topic. So these are the required HTTP verbs, which are associated with the topics in which a consumer will be interacting with your REST API, which you will be building it. So you can think something like this, a topic can have multiple courses and a course can consist of multiple lessons. So in this way, I have structured this resources for the course API for you. So if you carefully look at these topics, so you can ask your question to yourself that what are the required URLs we are going to be adding to it such that, you know, it becomes a very compatible REST API. But for this video, we are just going to only focus on the topics. Okay. Where we are going to map it with a controller and add a bunch of HTTP verbs or methods associated with it such as get, put, post and delete. So you can expect something like this. Suppose this will be your topic resource. So in order to access a particular topic, in order to get all the topics, what you're going to do is basically use the get. So as you can see, in order to get the topics, which is accessing all the topics, this is the root URL, which we are going to try out get slash topics. So basically you can see this is a standard rest convention. If you are building our rest API. Similarly, we are going to go for get topics. So in order to access the particular topic, we have to type get topics topics slash ID. So this will be our URL required to access a particular topic, which is our basic resource. Then in order to create a topic, the verb used all over here is the post. So post slash topics is going to create the topics. Then moving ahead, we can see that there's a put verb, which is basically used to update the topics. Okay. The same URL will be there slash topics slash ID, which is accessing the particular topic. Then we have delete. So delete verb, we are going to create it when we want to delete a particular topic. So the same URL will be there, delete verb slash topics slash ID. And in order to test whether our APIs are working fine or not, we are going to try it with the postman. So postman is a kind of a tool which we'll be using all over here. Okay. Which basically is going to test our APIs, whether it is working fine or not. Okay. So now let's start building our rest API. We have already used the verb called get to access all the topics all over here in the previous video. Okay. And we had our request map to slash topic all over here in which we had this method called public list topic access the topic. So we are basically returning array as a list. So you can see we had this topic class all over here in our package com dot example dot demo topic. Okay. So if you see this in this topic, we had the particular ID name course info. Then we created no argument constructor to make things easy. 
and we use the getters and setters and this was our constructor we have created for these variables which we have instantiated. Okay, so this was the basic thing what we have done all over here. Now in the topic.controller, I have created the object of this class and I have returned these objects in which our parameter was the name, ID and the introduction which is basically returned as a list. And for the same, I have imported, you know, certain packages all over here, which you can see. So if you click on this, you have arrays and list imported. And you can see this annotation as rest controller. So basically this annotation is telling that this class is our rest controller. And for a particular mapping request, we have used slash topic as our base URL. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this list into a separate business service. So in that business service, we are basically sending the list all over here to our controller. So instead of creating the list each and every new time, so we are basically access that list from our, you know, business service layer or the business service class, which we are going to create. So in this video, we will be looking at the new concept called business service in the spring and how to create a business service which I'm just going to show you right now. So for the scene, just go all over here in our package com.example.demo topic, click on the new, okay, just create a new class. Okay, so we can name it as the business service or suppose, so we will name it as the topic service. Then after naming it as just click on the finish. Okay, so this is our basically business service class. So what does a business service class means in spring? It means that this service is typically a singleton. So when the spring is starting up, the spring creates the instance of this service and it keeps that in its memory and it registers its instance also. So this is what a typically a spring application does when you create the topic service or the service class. So you can also create other controller and other services. So which will be basically depending on that service classes. So these controllers, which basically depends on the service declares a dependency. So it will say something like this. Hey spring, I need this service for a particular thing then spring is basically inject that dependency into the particular controller class. So this is how basically the service class works. So now, how do I make this class as a service class? So for that, we have to use an annotation which says at the rate service, just type this, okay. So basically, this annotation tells spring that this class is a service class and what this type of annotation is called as a stereotyped annotation. So now just click on this. So we have imported the stereotype dot service. So basically this is a stereotype annotation. So when the spring application starts up, it's going to look into this class path. And when it's find out that it has a service annotation, it's going to register it and it will make a note of it. So that's how this spring application works by making a note of it. So now let's say that in a topic controller class, we want the instance of our service. So basically how you are going to do that. So for the scene, you need to create the private member variable of the service class. So you can do it by typing such as, you know, private. So as you can see all over here, so I have created the instance of our service class all over here. So as I have already told you earlier, so service is basically in singleton. So whenever the spring application starts up, each and every time this instance is not going to get created. It's just going to create it at once and spring is going to get a note of it. So basically this is a dependency injection, which we are doing right now all over here in our topic controller class. So now, as I have told you, we are trying to create the dependency all over here, but how is spring is going to note that this we are trying to take the dependency of our service class into the controller class. So there's a particular annotation associated with it. 
that's called auto wired so as you can see i have written auto wired all over here just click on the import so as you can see so this is basically telling that this is a dependency injection or this is a dependency associated to our topic service class which is basically we are adding in our topic controller class so when the spring application is going to start up it's going to look all the member variables associated in this controller class and with this dependency it's going to note that this our topic service has been instantiated in our the controller class okay we are taking an instance of our service into our controller class so let me explain you one more time that how this dependency injection is working so basically you can see we have two class in our class path that is topic topic controller and this topic service okay so spring is going to see that there is a topic class all over here with all these you know initialized with id name and course info then it's going to see that there is a service class associated all over here so it's going to make a note of it and it will register it then it will see that we have a topic controller class all over here and it will mark it as you know in its registry that this is a rest controller okay now it will see that it has a auto wired annotation all over here which sees that we have initialized the instance of topic service you know which needs basically the dependency injection okay so this is how basically you are working and this is how the dependency injection principle is working i hope so you would have got clear with this idea so as you can see this annotation is telling that the instance of topic service is available all over here now what i'm going to do is basically so i'm going to move it all over here as a member variable you know in our service class so just you know do this and move it all over here so we're going to paste it okay now we are going to create the static block as a private member variable so now as you can see all over here in our topic service class i have created the instance or basically the member variable of list called topics in which i'm adding all these topics such as spring spring boot and introduction to spring framework so earlier what we did we generally hard coded all those things into our controller but now we are moving it to our service class okay now what i can do next is i'm going to create a method all over here so we have created this method you know called topic access topics all over here which is basically returning the copy of this you know this called spring spring boot these are all the new instances that we have created in our list called topics and basically this method is returning the list which is the copy of this okay now if we go in our controller class so you can see in our method called public list topic access topics which is returning the instance of this service called access dot topics which is basically returning these bunch of objects which we have created so what will happen you know when you're going to run the application so you can see the spring is going to find that this is our controller class then is going to go and find that there's a dependency injection involved all over here from the service class and when the verb comes up get slash topics you know when you type on the local host so it's going to return the instance of this service which is basically the bunch of objects you know associated with the method called access topics so as you can see all over here just click on this green button which i have already done it so it's going to start your spring application so it says that our port has started on local host 8080 so this is our you can say the local port so just go on this and if you type you know suppose local host and say you know topics which was our request mapped so you can see the bunch of these you know json objects we are getting as an http response so this was a similar response we got when we worked with our controller in the previous video but there was a new concept involved in this video in which i was telling that we have created another class which is called the service class so we have learned the concept of service class how it can be very helpful you know to manage our code so when we have the big projects working on 
creating a service class is a very good fundamental concept of Spring in which we are basically what we are doing all over here in the controller class is instantiating or making available the instance of our service class which works on the principle of dependency injection. I hope so this tutorial was clear to you. So how we created the service class in Spring. In the next video what we are going to do is basically what we are going to do is we are going to access the resource using those SCTP words which I have told you using get, put, post and delete. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides Java certification online training mentored by industry experts. The course link of which is given in the description below.